everyone and welcome to another episode of Radiant Central and I'm your host Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So today I want to talk about allergies, food allergies, and I want to share the story of my husband who recently discovered that he has an egg allergy and what we did to figure that out because in the last video I did I briefly mentioned it and for me it was a very interesting story of of just kind of what he went through, what we did, and what, what helped to really discover what it is he was allergic to. So pretty much with my husband, a few months ago, he developed a rash on, on his body. And it started just on his upper body, like his upper chest, his back, and on his shoulders. And it wasn't like a typical allergic reaction rash. Usually allergic reaction rashes a lot of times are, are hives and welts. But in this situation, it was just an itchy rash. You can tell by looking at it that his, his skin wasn't, wasn't smooth, it was a little bit bumpy, and it, and it was very rough. And it was just, the texture of his skin just kind of changed overnight. And he was very uncomfortable with the rash. And so it started off on his upper body, and then over time, I would say over like a week or two, it started spreading all, all over his body except for his face and the palm of his hands and his sole of his feet. So at first when we started seeing that the rash was not getting better and it was kind of like spreading and traveling around his body, then I, at first we were suspecting maybe it's something that's touching his skin. You know, maybe he's having like a contact allergy. So perhaps it might be the soap or laundry detergent or clothing, like something something is, is contributing that way to the, the rash. And, and also too, it was, it was rainy season here in Bali. And, and during rainy season, it gets it's the hottest time of the year and it's very humid. So he had thought maybe it's a heat rash and I thought maybe it's, it's something like he's using on his skin because it's everywhere but his face. And usually when, when it's in certain areas that normally where your, your clothing is touching or something, it might be coming from detergent used on the clothing or something like that, bed linens. And so at first we experimented with using different soaps and detergents. Pretty much in my household, obviously, we, we always used natural soaps and detergents. And, and I decided just to try different brands to see if that would make a difference. And, and everything being like fragrance free and all of that. And we did that for a few weeks and, and nothing changed. And his rash was just continuing to get worse. And, and the only thing he did notice that, that seemed to kind of help a little bit was that if he bathed in cold water, it, afterwards he felt much better. But if he took like a hot shower, a warm shower, he would be even more itchy and it would just become more inflamed and more irritated. And, but that was the only difference. But when it came down to using soaps or, or detergents, nothing made a difference. So we then knew that it, it must be something else that he's allergic to and, and I suspected it's something in, in his food. And so I mentioned this to him and you know, and he thought, yeah, that's a possibility. But at the same time, it, it's like when you mention it, you might be allergic to something in your food and you should take a break from this and not eat that, um, he's a little resistant, right? <laughs> Everyone has their favorite foods. And I have to say that a lot of times what I see is, is that sometimes when people have an allergy to a certain food, it's usually the food that they're most addicted to or they're the most attached to. This is something I see over and over again as a health coach, like when people come to me with health problems or even with weight loss. And a lot of times in the conversation when they say to me, what do you think about this certain food? Or do I really need to take this out of my diet? It's usually that one food that they're kind of most worried about that's probably causing them the most issues. I see that over and over again. And so for him, when I mentioned, well, you know, we should go through your diet and start taking out some of those allergenic foods and do an elimination diet, he's a little bit protective of his foods. <laughs> so, but what he was open to in the beginning was to do a juice fast. My husband loves juice fasting. So I thought at least if he goes on the juice fast, he'll be eliminating all allergenic foods at once, that at least he'll get a relief from the rash. The rash should go away if, if we're eliminating all allergenic foods. And for those that don't know what an allergenic food is, it's foods like dairy products, wheat, soy, corn, eggs, 
shellfish, nuts, like there's many, many different things that people have allergies to. And when you do like a juice fast, you're eliminating, I would say about 95% of allergenic foods. There are certain fruits and vegetables some people have allergies to, by the way, right? Like citrus fruits, things like oranges or lemons. Some people have allergies to strawberries. Some people have allergies to pineapple. So those foods are still, could be in a, in a juice fast, but usually the allergic reaction to those foods is it's usually on the face. So I, I knew what to look out for with that kind of allergy. And I wasn't suspecting that type of allergy because he's normally not eating much citrus fruit to begin with. I knew that it had to be something else in his diet. And so we put him on the juice fast to see what will happen. And interesting enough, he did the juice fast for a week and he loved it, but his rash continued. And it didn't get any worse, but it didn't get any better. It was still there. And so I was quite surprised because I was expecting at least, I would say, by the fifth or sixth day of doing a juice fast and clearing things out of the body that, and having a break from allergenic food, you would think that things would start getting better, but they didn't. And so once he finished the juice fast, though, the good thing was is that he was much more open and willing and, and even excited to try elimination diet. I think mainly because he'd been having that rash for, so, for such a long time. This has been weeks that he had it. And it was getting annoying and frustrated. And at the same time, doing a juice fast, he felt really good. And when you take everything out of your diet afterwards, you're, you're more willing to to take other things out of your diet for a while and see how it goes, right? You, you kind of get the, the willpower built up from doing the juice fast and, and you feel strong and more confident and you feel really great that you don't want to be introducing foods that are going to hurt you anyway. So he was much more willing after the juice fast to do an elimination diet. And so the first thing I thought about was, okay, what is it, what food is it that you're eating every single day that could be causing the most problems? And for him, I knew straight off the bat, and so did he, was that eggs. My husband loves eggs. He loves eggs like someone loves chocolate. He eats it every single day, and he eats a lot of them. And it's, it's like the staple in his diet. <laughs> and whenever in the past, whenever he's ever had a problem, he'll always say to me, do you think it's the eggs? And I always say, you know, it could be. Why don't you take a break? And then, and then he won't say anything. <laughs> and so I, I always know that when, when someone can't give something up, that's probably where the issue is. And so the first thing we took out of his diet was the eggs. And we did it for a few weeks. And it was only until, I would say, at least three weeks of being off of eggs did his skin start getting better. The rash went away. And he started feeling much better. And so when you think about it, it was three weeks of being on a 100% no egg diet, you know, so it's only taking eggs out, but it's making sure you're not eating anything that's prepared with eggs, you know, so that's also taking, getting rid of most prepared foods. A lot of times there's eggs and things people are not even aware that there's eggs in it. So he, he did that for three weeks. The rash completely cleared up, but it took three weeks plus an extra week from that juice fast. So in total, it's like four weeks. It was like a month where he finally started seeing a difference. And I'm pointing this out because a lot of times people do elimination diets because they think they have a food allergy or food sensitivity, but they only do it for a few days. And if you just do it for a few days, you might not be giving it enough time to actually clear from your body and for your immune system to rebalance and heal. You know, so this is a really good example that it doesn't just take a few days. It doesn't take a week of being off of something. And sometimes you have to do it for an entire month or maybe even a little bit longer to see, to really know for sure. And with him, it took an entire month to realize, okay, he has an allergy to X and for his skin to heal. And then afterwards, when, when we can confirm it, he secretly afterwards went for a few days eating eggs again. And lo and behold, <laughs> I think it was, it took about three days for the, the rash to come right back. And the first thing I said to him was, it looks like your rash is back. And he was like, you know, he admits, yeah, he had some eggs. <laughs> and so, and since then he hasn't had any eggs and, and the rash is gone. And, and perhaps that's his journey, that it's kind of like, he had to really know for sure that this was what's causing the issue. And now that he knows and it's kind of scared him and, and he's already kind of suffered and all of that, Hopefully he'll stay away from it. And so, but it was an interesting thing to watch and, and to see. And so I wanted to share his experience and, and what we did and, 
and, and for anyone that is suspecting that they have a food allergy or a food sensitivity, because you can go for tests, and, and here we're in Indonesia, so these kind of things are not as easily or readily available. That we doing an elimination diet is usually, I would say, most accurate if you have symptoms. Sometimes people have allergies and they don't have any symptoms at all, or it takes a long time to get those symptoms, and I think that's the case with my husband, is that he probably had the allergy for a very long time, but it's only now that his body's really like breaking down and showing it. And so you can definitely go and get tested for allergies, but I would say to anyone that suspects it is to do both, get the allergy tests and do an elimination diet if you suspect it's a, it's a food allergy. Because sometimes too is that it might not show up in the allergy test, but you do the elimination diet and you feel much better and the symptoms go away. So I find hand in hand, if, if both those things are available to you and you can do it, I would do both. And when it comes down to doing something like juice fasting to figure out if you have a food allergy, well, juice fasting is great, but you, you need to do an elimination diet to figure out exactly what the problem is. Okay, and with juice fasting, it, it's great that it gives you a break from allergenic foods, but at the end of the juice fast, if you feel great, then perhaps you are allergic to something, but you don't know what it is. And you don't want to just stay away from all allergenic foods and foods that you don't even have an allergy to because you know you're allergic to something. That you need to do an actual elimination diet to figure out what it is that you have a problem with. So you might like let's say you're you're thinking about doing a juice fast and you have a food allergy, you might do what my husband did of <laughs> doing a juice fast at first just to get the momentum going, but then afterward follow it up by doing an elimination diet. That's what I would recommend. Or just do the elimination diet itself and, and not do any fasting. So these are things that you can try out. And, and yeah, so it was really cool to, to see what happened with him, and I'm, I'm also happy to share it. And, and that's it. So I wish everyone a super fabulous day. And I will mention as well, if anyone is interested in doing a juice fast, we do start the next live seven-day juice fasting program. It starts August 3rd. So this is a whole new program. We just launched it last month. And with the new program, you can do the Juice Fast at any time on your own. You, right when you purchase the program, you get the ebook and all the videos, everything, and also access to a private Facebook group. And on that Facebook group, you can connect with other people doing the Juice Fast. You can do it on your own, or you can wait till August 3rd where everyone's going to do it together, and I support everyone for that week on the, face, the private Facebook group. So if you want more information on the Juice Fast that I offer, you can go to my website at radiancecentral.com and click on Juice Fasting, and you'll see it there. Have a super fabulous day, everyone, and I'll see you again soon.